So the next thing we need to discuss is this idea of the aerodynamic centre of the whole aircraft. So we looked at what was meant by the aerodynamic centre of an aerofoil, right? It was the point at which, by changing angle of attack, moments about that point are constant. Well, the same can be applied to the whole aircraft, right? So um, the pitching moment of the whole aircraft doesn't change with angle of attack at this point that we call the aerodynamic centre of the whole aircraft. In other words, the pitch moment coefficient with respect to alpha is zero. So what we have when the aircraft is in trim is that the aerodynamic centre of the whole aircraft is at the centre of gravity position when the uh, pitch moment coefficient with respect to alpha is zero because net moments about the centre of gravity position are zero, right? So in a trim condition, the aircraft is not pitching nose up, neither is it pitching nose down, right? So what we can do with these two bits of information, so firstly we have this CM alpha equals zero, so we can return to our CM alpha equation from the previous video, right? It was over here, we derived it in here. We can set this to zero, and then using the assumption about where the aerodynamic centre is with respect to the centre of gravity position, we can write all of the X bar CGs as X bar ACs, right? Which is what I've done here. And that whole equation can be rearranged to tell us where the aerodynamic centre of the whole aircraft is. It's given by this thing. And so what we've essentially done here is averaged out the aerodynamic center of the wing and body and the aerodynamic center of the horizontal tail. So the next thing that we can do is look at our pitch moment equation and basically say that the pitch moment is a force times a perpendicular distance, right? So our moment in this case is our pitch moment with respect to angle of attack, our force in this case is our lift coefficient with respect to angle of attack, and then the moment arm associated with our force to give us a moment is the difference in distance between the centre of gravity position and the aerodynamic centre of the whole aircraft. And we call this difference the static margin. And that's important for a number of different reasons which I've tried to summarise over here. So the CM alpha term is what gives the aircraft longitudinal stability. It's what gives the aircraft a restoring pitch moment to correct for turbulence, for example. And we'll see an example of that in a moment. And the greater this difference between the centre of gravity position and the aerodynamic centre, the more stable the aircraft is. Right? because we have a larger moment arm for the lift force. Um, but that's not always a good thing to have an overstable aircraft because an overstable aircraft is a compromise in maneuverability. So it becomes a trade-off between the two things, right? We need stability, but we also need maneuverability. So what the static margin tells us, using this equation down here, is an acceptable range for where the center of gravity position can be to maintain longitudinal stability, right? And that's important for certain classes of aircraft, for example, passenger airliners, transport aircraft, that kind of thing, because the aircraft needs to be stable. But it's not so important for uh, fighter aircraft, for example, because of this um, trade-off with maneuverability. So it's more important that a fighter aircraft is maneuverable than stable necessarily, right? And you can see these two um, examples that I've given here for the different classes of aircraft. You can see that a fighter aircraft typically is stable but only just above zero. Okay, so let's take a look at what I mean here when I'm talking about longitudinal stability. Well, let's take this example at the top here. Um, we're in a trim condition, so we're in a cruise. We have different forces acting on the aircraft. We have 
um, thrust from the engines, we have the weight vector acting at the centre of gravity position, we have lift and drag acting at the aerodynamic centre, and they all balance out to give zero moments about the centre of gravity position. So let's say we're flying along and we hit some turbulence that momentarily increases the angle of attack. So what happens is the thrust vector and the weight vector, they stay the same, but we have a momentary increase in angle of attack, which gives us more lift, a lot more lift, and potentially a little bit more drag. So what happens is, is this lift vector generates a nose down pitching moment, and that in turn restores the original angle of attack, right? So that's what we mean by longitudinally statically stable, is that a change in angle of attack yields a pitching moment in the opposite direction to try to restore the original angle of attack. So in this particular case, no input from the pilot or no correction from the pilot is required in order to regain the trim condition. So that relies on the fact that the aerodynamic centre is rearwards of the centre of gravity position, right? <coughs> so what we find is if these two things are the opposite way around, we get the opposite effect, right? So here we are again in our trim condition, but this time the centre of gravity position has gone back behind the aerodynamic centre. So this, in this case, what happens is if we fly through some turbulence that gives us a momentary increase in angle of attack, the lift vector increases, so we're no longer in trim, the drag vector increases a little bit too, and that gives us a nose up pitching moment, which increases the angle of attack still further, and therefore the aircraft starts to diverge from the trim condition, right? You see that change in angle of attack has given us a, a larger lift uh, lift force here which is going to give us this nose up pitching moment and that's just going to continue to diverge and will require some intervention from the pilot in order to correct that back to the trim condition and that's what we mean by being longitudinally unstable.